Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and in this video, I'm going to talk about the Operon. The Operon was discovered in the 1960s by three French scientists, Jacob Rouf and Monod. That's really bad French. Um, but they got to coin the term Operon, and basically it means to operate. And so it's mostly found in prokaryotic cells, mostly found in bacteria. There's a few eukaryotic Operons, but in general, it's just going to be found in bacteria. And so uh, it led to other terms that you've maybe never heard of before, like regulons and modulons and stimulons. Uh, stimulons are groups of operons operating together uh, from one stimuli. And so it just means to operate. That's what an operon means. And so the one that they discovered was the LAC operon. They were studying this in E. coli. And so the LAC operon is designed for E. coli to break down lactose. So lactose is going to be a disaccharide. And remember, if you're a bacteria living in our gut, you're eating whatever we're eating. And so as the material moves down through our digestive system, they have to be ready to quickly shift depending on what the food is. If it's sugar, they have to be able to break down the sugar. If it's proteins, they have to be able to break it down into amino acids. And if it's a disaccharide, in this case, they have to move it into the cell and then break it down and chemically digest it. And so they use a LAC operon to do that. Now, this is a picture of Prague, um, but that's not how you spell Prague. But it is the way that I remember the parts of an operon. You've got a promoter, a repressor, an operator, and then genes. And so if you can remember Prague, it's going to get you half of the way there to remembering how an operon works. And so the neat thing about bacteria is that if they have a number of different genes that are used to achieve a certain task, they'll put them right next to each other. And so as the RNA polymerase moves down the DNA and makes all of the messenger RNA and makes all the proteins, you're just ready to do whatever the job is. And so the genes are going to be located right next to each other, in this case, in the LAC operon, to deal with lactose. What else do we have? Well, we've got the promoter. The promoter is going to be the region of the DNA where the RNA polymerase can grab onto the DNA. We also have an operator. And so think of that like a on-off switch that's going to turn on or off the operon. And then the last thing we have is a repressor. And so this is a LAC operon. It's PROG. It's promoter, repressor, operator, and then all of the genes. And so what are we trying to break down? We're trying to break down lactose or deal with lactose. Remember, lactose looks like this. It's a disaccharide. But in this little model right here, we're going to represent it as a little uh, pentagon, a yellow little object that looks like this. And so all of a sudden, a lot of lactose is present. So what is the lac operon going to do? Well, it's going to deal with that lactose. And so all of this lactose is moving around, remember. But eventually, one of the molecules is going to bump into the repressor. As it bumps into the repressor, it's going to change the shape of that repressor. And so a, a, a quick digression, everything promoter, operator, and genes are DNA. So they're going to be part of the DNA of the bacteria. But the repressor is a little bit different. It's a protein. It's a protein that came from a different part of the DNA. Um, there's going to be a regulatory sequence, either upstream or downstream of the operon, that creates the repressor. It plugs in nicely to the operator. But once the lactose fits inside it, it's going to change the shape of that repressor. What does that do? Well, it opens up a region where that promoter can allow the RNA polymerase to get, up, get on. And then that RNA polymerase is just going to drive right down the DNA. It's going to make a bunch of RNA. It's going to make a bunch of those proteins. What are the proteins designed to deal with? Lactose. And so they're going to break down the lactose. Now all the lactose is gone, what's going to happen to that repressor? It's going to return to its original shape, and that shape is going to fit into the operator. And so if there's no lactose present, we would say the operator is in the off position because the repressor has, is activated. It's activated. It's sitting inside the operator. It's physically breaking the movement of that RNA polymerase. The RNA polymerase can't move down and code for those genes because the repressor is sitting in its what happens next? Well, lactose shows up again. Lactose would move into the repressor, free it up, and then it's going to be able to make those genes. And I've got a simulation at the end of this video that shows you in a little more detail how that takes place. Before we get there, I want to talk about the trip operon. The trip operon does essentially the opposite of that. So the trip operon is, is uh, evolved in bacteria to deal with tryptophan, or, or more specifically, to deal with the absence of tryptophan. So tryptophan is going to be an amino acid, and it's required to make proteins. It's one of those 20 essential amino acids. 
And so the trip operon basically is designed to make tryptophan if it's not present. And so we're going to get tryptophan in, you know, in poultry, in, in, a lot, in milk for that matter. There's going to be high levels of tryptophan. But if a bacteria doesn't have tryptophan, there's a number of different genes that are required to make it. And so they can make their own. And so we've got an operon called the trip operon. How does that work? Well, again, we've got prog. We've got our promoter, our repressor, our operator, and then our genes. But if we have tryptophan present, so tryptophan is going to be these yellow hexagons, um, if we have tryptophan, tryptophan is going to fit inside the repressor and it's going to change its shape so that it fits in the operator. And so in this case, if we have a bunch of tryptophan present, then we don't want to make tryptophan. And so the repressor is going to set that operator to the off position. What happens if all of a sudden the tryptophan goes away? If there's no tryptophan in the diet, well, the bacteria is not out of luck because it changes now the shape of that repressor. And so once it's changed the shape of the repressor, RNA polymerase can grab on, drive down that uh, operon, make all of those genes, and those genes can be used to, to uh, create more tryptophan. Um, and so it's a great kind of a feedback loop. So in a, in a LAC opteron, we're going to turn it on if we want to break down lactose. In a trip operon, what we're going to do is create tryptophan if we don't have it or if it's not present. And I really didn't understand how operons worked until I stopped thinking like a scientist and really started thinking like an engineer. We've got a problem that we have to solve, and one of the great ways we can do that is using an operon. And so um, I'm going to show you a quick simulation of how this works. It's a PHET simulation. Here's a website. I'll put a link to the simulation down in the video description down below. But it's a, it's a great way when I've used it with my students for them to wrap their head about, around how an operon works. And so we're looking at an, a lack operon, and to make it simple, we're only dealing with um, one gene, one of those three genes that are found. And so if we're to look at the simulation, you could try to figure out what everything is, but it's easier if I show you the legend and show you what everything is. And so we've got RNA polymerase kind of bouncing around here. Again, they'd be moving around. There's molecular motion. They'd just be randomly bouncing around. But this is one of the players. We've got the RNA polymerase right here. We could look down below, and you could, I could ask you, now, where is the operon? Is this the operon here, or is this the operon? Well, the right answer is this. This is going to be the operon here because it's got a promoter. So let's put that promoter out here. It's got an operator, an on-off switch, and then it's going to have a gene, in this case, the lax -E gene. So what's this up here? Well, this is not an operon, but this is going to be another what we call a regulatory sequence. And so this one down here is going to make an enzyme that's going to break down lactose. But what's this RNA polymerase up here going to make? Well, it's coding. It's making a little bit of messenger RNA. But what it's eventually going to make is it's going to make a repressor. OK, so now we've got the fourth part of our um, operator. We've got the promoter right here. We've got the repressor. We've got the operator. And now we've got the gene. But you can see that the RNA polymerase can't make that gene because the repressor is blocking its way. Um, and so it's, it's in an off position at this point. And it should be. In other words, we shouldn't start making those genes until lactose is present. And so let's add a bunch of lactose. So I'm going to add a bunch of lactose here. And let's watch what happens. Well, if we add a bunch of lactose, and we could speed up the simulation a little bit, what's going to happen is the repressor, and I could pause it right here, that repressor is now having the lactose bind to it, and it's changing its shape or it's changing its conformation. Once the lactose, and you can see it's happened in two cases, once the lactose binds to the repressor, it can't bind to the operator anymore. And so if we play the video, what's going to happen? Well, now RNA polymerase can drive down the operator, uh, or excuse me, down the operon. It can produce a protein. In this case, that's going to be a lac -Z protein. What's it going to do? It's going to digest and break down all of the uh, lactose that's present. And you can see that it's gobbling up all of those lactose. The only lactose left is those that are bound, uh, bound to the repressor itself. What happens eventually, all of the uh, lactose is, is going to disappear. In other words, we will have broken it down. What happens now? Well, that repressor is going to bind to the operator again. And now we can't make that protein to break it down. And so it's a wonderful feedback loop. It's a feedback loop that deals with a bunch of lactose present. Because E. coli would be silly to make all of the proteins to break it down until we've got a bunch of lactose present. 
And so that's an operon. What is it again? It's all of the genes and then a way to control those genes in one tidy little package. And I hope that was helpful.